Welcome. In today's video, I'll be unboxing and guiding you step by step on how to upgrade the Panther X2 with the potential to increase your coverage and HNT rewards. I'll leave all the relevant links in the description below. I had received the Panther X2 within 7 days of shipping and currently they have a massive availability of stock, offering shipping within 72 hours from purchase, which is currently unheard of these days for helium miners. However, it is also good to note that once you do receive your device, you might be subject to pay some custom taxes depending on the country you are based. So let's get into the unboxing. The box is slimline and minimal, and once opened, within the box you are provided with the following items. One of the meanest looking helium miners on the market, the Panther X2, an instructional manual, a 3dBi omnidirectional antenna, a power adapter for the region of your hotspot, and finally a Panther X business card and a pin. The product is very small in size and hardly takes up any space. Taking a look at the back of the unit, there is a Bluetooth button which is pressed to link the hotspot to the Helium application, a power port which the adapter is plugged into, a LAN port if you require to connect the Panther X via Ethernet cable, and a LoRa port to connect the antenna. The USB and TF card ports are currently not of any use, but might be in the near future. For this Panther X2, I won't be using the stock 3dBi antenna, and I will be upgrading it. If you are looking to do the same, here is a diagram of all the parts required for an upgrade. In a few simple steps, I will explain exactly how they all fit together. Step 1. Understand your miner. To save you money and time purchasing the wrong products, first understand what connections are required for your miner. The Panther X2 has an RP-SMA female port meaning it requires an RP-SMA cable to feed into the back of the unit. Step 2. What cable is required? There are many different type of antenna cables out on the market. If you purchase a poor quality cable, you could heavily reduce the signal output. One of the best and affordable cables on the market is the Times Microwave LMR400. If you do have a wider budget, the LMR600 cable loses less signal, however, it is less flexible. The length of the cable will be dependent on your setup. It is also good to remember that as the cable gets longer, it loses more dBi. The LMR400 connector that feeds into the Panther X2 requires to be an RP-SMA male, and the other side of the cable is an N-type female connector, which feeds into a lightning arrestor, which brings me on to step 3. A lightning arrestor is mainly used to safeguard your home in case lightning were to ever hit your antenna. So for this setup, you can use a lightning arrestor with an N-type male to N-type female connector. The N-type female end of the LMR400 cable will feed into the N-type male end of the lightning arrestor, and the opposite N-type female end will feed into the antenna. So step 4. What antenna is required? You would ideally want to connect to miners with high transmit skills. The antenna used for this upgrade is a McGill Microwave 6dBi antenna. However, alternative antennas can be used to best fit the purpose of your surroundings, such as a high dBi directional antenna which can shoot out a concentrated signal in a certain direction. Whatever antenna you do end up purchasing, for this specific setup, you will need to ensure that the antenna has an N-type male end. And step 5, the final installation. The antenna has been placed on top of a roof and secured tightly with zip ties and jubilee clips onto another antenna that was already in place. The LMR400 cable runs from the lightning arrestor and into the home, where the miner is plugged into a power source. A grounding wire is important to ensure that if the antenna is hit by lightning, the current will flow through the grounding wire instead of the LMR400 cable. So one side of the grounding wire is inserted into the lightning arrestor and the other side connects to the copper grounding rod or anything that will ground the wire and absorb the current. A good tip would be to roughly lay out where you are going to be placing the antenna. Then you can determine how long the grounding wire needs to be as well as the LMR400 cable just before you make a purchase. And that's it, with all of these parts you can successfully upgrade a Panther X2. I hope you found value from this video and if so, please do give it a thumbs up, subscribe and keep those notification bells on. And if you do have any questions, please do leave them in the comments below. I'll see you in the next one. Peace.